Hey, it's Jordan, the Millionaire Millennial. Welcome back to this series on how to build a software as a service. And in this one, we're gonna be talking about launching and scaling. So if you haven't already watched all of the other ones, you need to obviously go back and watch those. Otherwise, this one won't make any sense at all. So let's jump into how to launch and scale your SaaS business. So at this point, you have done the research in the market, you have done some pre-marketing, and you've built the application. So we want to launch this business. We want to launch your SaaS with as much push as we can so that scaling it and growing it is as easy as possible. So one thing that I really want to emphasize on that I did poorly when I launched my first SaaS is beta test. Now this is something that you should do with any product that you launch, whether it be a SaaS or any anything at all, is you wanna test the product with a small group of people. So it's not enough to just have you know your developer test or if you're building it yourself or your co-founder, it's not enough to just have one or two people testing the software. You should have a group of people. You know, a dozen is enough probably, but have those people come in before you launch it Right? It's kind of part of the launch because you're launching it to a closed beta and you want to make sure it works right. Okay, so uh, something that happened to me when I launched um, a recent SaaS was I sent out a, you know, an email to a bunch of people that I knew were interested in the software and the thing was the website wasn't working right. Right, so people couldn't actually but people couldn't actually even access the site that the SaaS was on. So that would have been something that I would have found out if I had had some beta testers. So be sure to just have a really small group of people, a dozen people that you know and trust to come in and test the software. Now, if you don't have like a dozen people that are in the market that would even know what your software is about, then what you need to do is just reach out to some people that are in that group that you found via pre-marketing and ask them if they want to participate in a closed beta. Now, most people will say yes, um, you know, you can make this beta paid, you can make it free, that's up to you. But, you know, going with the free route is probably the best because then it allows your beta testers to fully test the software and get an idea for it. And then once the beta test is over, you can say, okay, it's over. You can either continue using it by paying for it or not. But either way, running a beta test, either paid or free, is going to benefit you significantly on launch day. Now, what you do on launch day is fairly easy. Um, it's actually things you kind of want to do leading up to launch day is ideally if you're doing pre-marketing right, this will make this step relatively easy and that is to get people excited for the launch of your software. So if let's say in pre-marketing you started a blog or you, you started doing some sort of advertising of some sort, content marketing, and you're getting people opting in, getting people's emails, you know, maybe a week or two, maybe even a month prior to the official launch date, you start sending out emails. Okay, you start communicating with the people that you know are interested in your software and you start kind of getting them hyped. You say, hey, software is about to come out, it's gonna have all these features, it's gonna be awesome, it's gonna be the best. Be sure you're ready on this date and just really hammer home the date that you wanna launch it on. Okay, so that gets people thinking about it consistently. Uh, you don't need to spam people, certainly. You can email every other day or every couple days. And then like the week prior to launch, you actually do want to email people probably every day, maybe even twice a day, definitely the day before and the day of, because you want to make sure as many people see your software on the day it's launched as you possibly can. Because you want to have an initial group of users come on and immediately start using the software. Because once you have a solid group of intro users, then it becomes a lot easier to continue to grow software because you can get testimonials from most people, you can get reviews, you can start using that feedback to make your software even better. So it's pretty important that you get some users on launch day. And again, you don't have to get hundreds of users on launch day, you know, that would be a really successful launch, but just a few dozen, you know, a couple dozen users on the day that you launch would be fantastic. So again, if you're doing pre-marketing right, it makes this step very easy because you can just kind of throw into the content you're already making, hey, also, my software's about to launch. Now when it comes to scaling, there's a lot of options. There's 
tons of ways to scale your particular business and I'm not going to get into every single one of them although I will say that I really do like organic methods more than paid methods now with Atlas we grew Atlas using SEO with a blog as well as using Google Ads okay so ads that you see if you search something on Google now we thought about using YouTube ads and we toyed around with it and, and maybe uh, we would have um, but mostly we just focused on SEO and Google Ads. Now SEO, as far as the strategy goes, and again, this is something you probably should employ during the pre-marketing phase, but if you're building a blog or you're building out a YouTube channel or you're building out you know, some sort of other content collection, you want to frame it around the idea of the software. So essentially users that are gonna be using your software what are they interested in reading? What are they interested in consuming content wise? And then just making content for that. A great SEO strategy is to build a, what's called a cornerstone piece, right? It's a massive blog article. Uh, you know, it could be thousands and thousands of words, you know, 7,000 words, 10,000 words in this massive article. And it kind of summarizes the entire market, okay? So for Atlas, uh, we have a massive blog post that's just a bunch of stuff about online arbitrage, right? Because that's our market. Our market is online arbitrage. And it's, it's a big cornerstone piece. And all the other blogs that we have all link to that main blog post. And anytime there's a guest post on someone else's blog, they all link back to that main blog post. And so that makes that particular blog post rank really high in Google, okay? So just having a lot of backlinks and making that content really good so that people stay on that page and they read it is really good for SEO. If you prefer to go the paid route uh, using Google ads or any other kind of ads, you can do YouTube ads, you can do LinkedIn ads, you can do Snapchat ads, you can do TikTok ads, you can do ads all over the place. You know, you can pay for ads essentially anywhere. Um, again, at Atlas, we used Google ads and those were pretty successful for us. So how you would set up a Google ad campaign is you want to target your main keyword. For example, for Atlas, it was online arbitrage. That was like our bread and butter. That's where we got most of our sales by just targeting that, essentially that singular keyword got us most of our results. Now there was a lot of other keywords there that we went after as well, but that particular keyword resulted in most of the sales that we got from Google ads. So you go after that particular keyword and you can bid you know, relatively high on it and the content for the ad is just explaining what pain point your software solves. And it's really as simple as that. Like you, you don't need to uh, employ a bunch of, you know, copywriting, extreme salesy nonsense. You can really just say like, hey, this is what our software does. And if you're experiencing this problem, then here's the solution. And that's honestly, in my opinion, the best way to sell anything is to say, hey, you have this problem? Well, guess what? Here's the solution. Go ahead and take it. And that's really the strategy you wanna employ in any kind of marketing, uh, in any kind of scaling and growing is just have a product that solves a pain point, again, going all the way back to you know, pre-marketing and going back to market selection. And that is to make sure that your product is solving a pain point. Because if you're solving a pain point, it's pretty easy to sell the product. So going back to some free methods, you could start a YouTube channel, right? It's pretty easy, pretty straightforward. You can just create content for the market that you're going to be building the SaaS for, okay? So similar to this channel, I talk about all sorts of different stuff and I've built a SaaS around the ideas that I've talked about on this channel and that's been successful for me. So that's obviously a living, breathing, real life example of the fact that that works, okay? so. You can start in any realm you want to. And scaling your business, there's you know, hundreds, if not thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of ways to go about doing it. So the ones I'm talking about here are ones that I've done, that I've had success with, but that doesn't mean that they're gonna be the best fit for you. So there's all sorts of ways to scale your business. But these are the ones that I like, and these are the ones that I think are sustainable long-term, as in you, know, you create content it's organic and it's free traffic. And that's something that's gonna last a long time. And the last point I wanna hit on here is pretty important and that is to sell your product, sell your SaaS to the people that already want it. Okay, so you know that's sometimes called the low hanging fruit. 
And essentially, if you can't get the people that are your target audience, people that you essentially built the software for, if you can't get those people to use your software, then you are in hot water because it, those are the people that want it, right? Those are the people that need it. And if you can't get them to, to use it, then you have a problem, okay? And so there might be an issue just with pricing. Maybe it's too expensive. You just need to lower the price a little bit. Maybe it's too cheap because if a software is too cheap, people think that's not going to really work all that well. So maybe you actually need to raise the price. So there's all sorts of different tests, split tests you can run with pricing and you know with the way that the product is pitched on the sales page or on the marketing page. So you might have to toy around with that for a little while before you find what works the best. And that's something you should always do moving forward is be split testing your different pages, making sure that you're trying different variations of the title, of the images, of the colors even, of the buttons, of the fonts. Um, I mean, maybe that's pushing it uh, a little too much, but you get what I mean. You know, you should be split testing different ideas that you think might convert better, you think that might get more sales. But at the end of the day, if you can't get people um, to buy it, that you know should want it and you know solves their problem, then you're gonna have kind of rough time. So again, that part is really imperative that you spend a lot of time in the marketing and pre-marketing and in the uh, market evaluation and verification segment of this entire series so that you know that the product that you're building for the market, that, that market exists, and that it wants what you're building. So I wanna thank you for sticking on this long if you're still watching all the way from the beginning because the next video is gonna be our last video and that's gonna be exiting. I'm gonna talk about how to actually sell your business. So this is actually something that I'm in the middle of doing. I'm actually in the process of selling my software business right now and so I've experienced a lot of this very recently. It's very fresh in my mind so I'm excited to share that with you in the next video. So the next video is gonna be about exiting and I'll see you there. Bye.